This lesson dealt with the analysis of non-renewable resources, that is resources consisting of energy or material stocks that are generated very slowly through natural processes. This stock can be thought of as existing in fixed, fixed finite quantities. Once extracted, they cannot regenerate in time scales that are relevant to humans. We started this lesson with a discussion of the ways to measure resource stocks, while it is important to distinguish between purely physical measure of stock size and economic measure of a resource stocks. Non-renewable resources consist of a large number of particular types and forms of resources, among which there may be substitution possibilities. The demand for a resource may hence exhibit a chalk price. At such a price, demand would become zero and would switch to an alternative resource or to a backstop technology. Adopting a welfare maximization framework somehow similar to those introduced in the last lesson we found, not surprisingly, but an efficient net price path for the non-renewable resource must follow the telling rule. In some circumstances, a socially optimal depletion program will be identical to a privately optimal depletion program where are individual entities to maximize their expected profits. However, this is a subject of a set of assumptions. Market are perfect, the social consumption discount rate equals to the market interest rate, etc. We show that instead, in monopolistic markets, time to depletion of the resource become longer. The resource's net price is higher in the early years and lower in the end years of the resource extraction and consumption. And the opposite arises for the resource extraction. Initially, the resource is extracted at a lower, suboptimal level. Even if our model was very simple, we already crashed in our analysis toward one of the main characteristics of dynamic systems. That is, they are very hard to fully understand and predict. In our discussion of comparative dynamic analysis, we often found ourselves that while changing some parameter of the model has some direct, easily uh, predicted effect, for example, increasing the discount rate, increase the slope of the resource net price path through the hoteling rules, the dynamic and interconnected nature of the optimization problem leads to further indirect effects that often emerge as a rebound effect in the optimal solution. For example, in this case, we would have a lower initial price of the resource. As many measures of a resource stock exist, many indicators of scarcity also do exist, from physical to economic ones. We saw that, paradoxically, renewable resources may exhibit larger scarcity problems than non-renewable ones. Although this lesson complete our analysis on non-renewable resources, we will discuss them still in the next lesson, where we'll focus to the pollution problem that often arises with the extraction or the usage, or with both.